Welcome guys, we're just going to do a little bit of a 360 panorama test for the Mavic. Let's go over into a nice little spot for the Mavic. And, uh... So there's kind of an area between two bridges here. If we spin around, you can see. And we'll try and put it in tripod mode, keep it more still. So you're looking back at me there. And we'll knock it into portrait mode, which normally has got default. It's down on the on the D-pad thingy majig. And we'll kind of focus it there. And we'll try that. So basically we'll just turn and do a picture and we'll try and get them to overlap a little. So I was recording video, so I'll stop that, switch it onto camera mode, and here we go. So there's one, and we'll rotate, there's two, and I'm not going to worry about doing too many, it's better to have them overlap than to have a gap and ruin the whole thing. We're trying to do a full 360, obviously we can't do above us. And we'll come back, and one more for good luck. Now I'll also try and do a couple a little bit lower down to make sure we get that area below us. Straight down, and then I'll kind of rotate up a little, and I'll go around again quickly. Sure, I didn't miss a bit there because we'll. I mean, it should be fine in portrait mode because we are capturing a lot of the vertical. Now, obviously, we can't capture what's above us without any acrobatics, and I'm not going to try that with a Mavic not just yet. So, I'll jump back into video and bring it back in so you can see what that looks like. Back into uh, regular landscape mode. Rotate back towards the. That's the wrong bridge. We don't want to go towards that one. And we'll come back to this bridge. Still on tripod mode, so it moves very slowly. You see, we drop it down there. And there we go. Okay, now we're back inside with the files here on the desktop. A nice warm cup of coffee to help us work on this 360. So we ended up taking 22 files in all, so we can see from basically here to here we have the horizontal, if you will, and then the ones I was pointing down. Probably took too many pointing down, but the software will sort that out. You see, we can go into and have a little browse through of them. Absolutely awful subject. Now this is, I mean, it's good to show the process of how I do it, but trees, it's better to have like the bridge and straight buildings and stuff that will work a lot better. We're going to give the program a challenge anyway and see what it comes out like. 
Now, one thing you can do is add the uh, light mode. Uh, so if you go in there and add that for Now, look, this is one of the only things I really use like the light mode. Pick one in the middle somewhere, and you could do them individually, but the reason I use Lightroom is because it lets you do them all at once. So you could go in and tweak this around a little. Go in here, contrast, highlights, shadows. Because they're all going to be very similar because they're from a very similar location, I made the mistake on the on the drone to not to turn auto exposure to manual, it should have been on manual because as I rotate around it would have changed the exposure so it's going to mismatch a little bit. Uh, so yeah, we can go in here and correct just one photo and then we can copy the settings on that. Uh, we go up to copy settings. So we can see here all these bars have changed to what I just did and I'm not going to do it too perfectly and the rest of them will be flat as it was imported. We'll go back to the original, we should, should have a little uh, icon that says it's been changed, there are some adjustments. And then we can do like a control all and click that one and then we'll use paste. There we go. Paste settings. And it'll go through all those guys and then basically do a do the development on there. You can see it fucking through. Just do a sync on that and open up this box. And now, if you click on any of them, you can see it's propagated those settings across all the pictures. So, that's just a really good way to apply your changes to many pictures at once. And that's one of the only really things I use Lightroom for. Okay, so we go back, so we save all our pictures in Lightroom, and then we come back in here, and we've got all our pictures. And then the program we're going to use to stitch all these together into a 360 sphere, we back with our pictures in the folder, and now we'll open them in a program called PTGUI and I'll put a link to this in the description. You can download a trial of it. I've been using this quite a while and it's really good. Now there are many different programs you can do this in and uh, this is just one of them. There's many ways, like you, there is programs where you can just take pictures with your camera, with your mobile phone, it'll update them straight into Google uh, Street View. But we're just going to go through this because this is what I use. So I've loaded all those pictures in there and it's quite a lot and then this will basically It'll try and stitch them all together automatically for you, and then it gives you a lot of options. I mean, this is a very high functionality program, if you will, to do this. So, if we go to control points, you can see at the top here we have all our pictures. So, it's 1 to 21, and then we just choose on the left which one we want, and on the right which one we want. And then, so what it'll do is say these pictures, they've, they've stitched them together, and you can say what are similar positions on them. So, you're basically helping the algorithm it has. To stitch them, and as I say, this is why this is a bloody awful uh, demo, demo, really, because we haven't got really good straight lines of buildings or windows or details within the picture. You know, we really have to dig in there. But it has found some itself. It really should have four per picture, but it generally manages, I think. So you can see there on seven and eight, we've got a lot of things that match. And you can go in here. You can. Uh, we've got something easy like the bridge. So if we go to one, zero, like that. You can actually, you can pick on something and go over here and pick on it and it'll say, oh, does that match? Okay, so you can find really, it's like where the diagonal support beams are, you could pick on those and you, know, you can just do all that. So yeah, this program, it's quite easy, you just load them all in there. There are other programs, if you search on 360 Panoramas, you'll find a lot of different programs, this is just one of them. So I'm not really, there's a lot of demos of this online as well, so I'm just showing this is what I'm using. I'm not going to go through and show you how to use this. Here. And you can go in and you can have a quick little preview. Because your panor panorama is going to be super high resolution because you're focusing in a 360 in a very small area of it. So the total sphere is actually su a super large image. So this will let you preview it a lot and it's just for really, really fast. Uh, so it's it's on here. And you can open it. So this is like a really long resolution version of what we've got and it can, just gives you a good idea and it's like, oh that's really stitched up together quite well. You know, the picture's not very good, it was a cloudy day, it was a bad time, but just you know, running through this as an example, you can use you know, this process to any scenario. And, uh, and you can see up here is 
uh, where the ceiling was to my horizontal pictures. Now if I'd enable the, on the gimbal you can go in the settings and enable it to go 30 degrees higher. If, the, if it's really stable there and no wind, you'll, you'll be able to do that without getting the blades in the, in the picture. So I should have done that and I would have got a little bit more higher area here. And the base comes to create and go to that. And I can do it Okay, so if we go to this output directory, and this is where I told it to put it, and click on this, you can see this is our stitch finish picture. Now one thing I'm going to do before I try and upload this anyway, I'm going to quickly go into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop with this picture. Uh, so now what I'll do with this now is I'll, uh, I'll select this area. And I'm just going to try and create it so the upper area is not as distinct. So we can select that and then we'll go to cut and show you that. So we're just picking it and it'll take the colour, whatever it is, you see it jumping around. So we'll take some in the sky because it's going to colour the rest of it in. Go to bucket and fill that. So you can see that's now that's really quite similar. I left my select on so it highlights that a little bit. So I'm just going to deselect that. And you can see there's a line there but it's not as dramatic as it was when it was black. And a really good thing we can do here is go to, and I'm not a Photoshop pro, so I'm sure there's many, many better ways to do this. Please leave a comment if you can give any tips on any of this process. I've not been using it that long. So in here, I'd go to like rubber stamp and make it quite large. And choose an area of colour and then just run over it. And kind of just get rid of that line. It just makes it a little bit more blended from one to the other. And obviously where the trees are, it's just going to blur it a little bit, which make it not so obvious. So yeah, really rushing through this, you can spend a lot more time on it. If you think, like, doing it this way, you're going to get a really good high resolution image that's well stitched. It's better than like a mobile phone would do. Moving up the control board. So very, very quickly, and the bottom's done quite well itself because we took a lot of pictures straight down. Now if we'd used the 30 degree gimbal mode, we would've got a much higher horizon here as well. And that you'll see the way that all merges together in the 360. You, know, you end up with a very, very, very good 360 panorama. And quickly, you wanna go to image size because the image size is a, it's a lot bigger than say Google would accept on the photosphere. So you wanna change that down to 12,000, which is the maximum. And it should be 6,000 height, 12,000 width, that's a two to one ratio. If you set it as that, then Google will allow you to update that properly. So we can just save that out. Okay, now uh, the way I'm going to upload it to the web and it creates a 360 is by using Google Street View. Now, G Google Street View is slightly different than uh, Google Maps. It's similar, but it's a, it is a different application. So if you search on Android or Apple and find the Street View app, what we can do then is we can upload this picture to a Google Drive and you can upload it anywhere else as well, but I'll just show you using Google Drive. An area called Pano and I can just, this is the test file, so this is what we just saved in Photoshop. I'll open that and we can have a quick see of it. It's, it's a huge picture, so it's taken a while. So I'm saying it's uh, it's like 50 megabyte JPEG, so it's, it's pretty big. And you can see that. And then we can just drag that into the drive and back inside the app, I can choose the middle one, which is the Import 360 Photos. Go to your drag, Google Drive, that's where you've updated it. Select the file and it will upload it as fast as can be, hopefully. And once it's imported it, then you can go to uh, choose an address nearby that when people search or it'll pop up in Google Maps and you can choose that, it kind of associates it with it. And then you can publish it. So you click on publish and you'll see it start doing its encoding or whatever it may uh, do there, it takes a while. Okay, then if we jump into Google Maps, so this is kind of the area we can see here, we have all the images. And if we jump to the first one, we've got a photosphere, and here we are, we're famous. And <laughs> this is actually far higher than a lot of the automatic 360 photo, photo uh, cameras that you would see because this all, this all is about 72 megapixel I think which is the maximum resolution it will accept. So if you do a really good picture you will see it here absolutely fantastic. You can see the faded area 
doesn't look too bad. If we move around to where the, the trees are, it probably look like low cloud or something. That's not really much we can do about that. If we had that gimbal 30 degrees higher, it would have been better. So yeah, you may see like these photo machine, photo things that you hold up uh, with the lens on both sides. They do you know, 8 megapixel, 12 megapixel, uh, but this is 72 megapixel. So this is not a great... Uh, great one because I just kind of showed you the process and the, the day I took the picture it was kind of almost raining and cloudy uh, you can see it's fuzzy in some areas but with those tools you can really uh, you know, if you spend your time you can get fantastic results a really good resolution this is also viewable in if you've got a, like a Google Cardboard or a little 3d viewer for your phone you can just actually tap that option inside Google Maps. If you click this, you tap the option and you can look around and use a sensor on your phone to look around in these. So it's quite good. Also, I think if you add 50 of these, then Google may give you the option to actually do these and make a little bit of money with doing them, in, even inside buildings and things. Now, obviously not with your Maverick, unless that's photo, uh, tripod mode maybe. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. If you, uh, I'll put a link in the bottom to this one so you can have a look. Even though it is a bit crappy, obviously, in certain areas as I rushed it. But you can have a look at that. And if you do any of these using your Mavic, please post them in the comments. I'd love to see them. And uh, let's hope we get loads of aerial 360s out there. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.